We are in Rome, everybody. So we are at the famous Pantheon. So this is, of course, the famous Trevi Fountain. So one of the things that I can definitely tell is magical about Rome is you can just wander around, and you'll stumble upon some gorgeous sights. And as you can see, it's one of the best viewpoints of the entire city of Rome. Buongiorno everybody, it's a uh, morning, <laughs> shit, <laughs> I'm so tired, it's uh, bright and early here in Naples and we are going to be taking a train from Naples to Rome, Rome, Italy, Roma, the heart and capital of the thriving Roman civilization, it's about 7 o'clock right now, we have a tour our train ride and then we'll be there showing you what's up, let's go. And we are in Rome, everybody. Just left the station. It is a cold morning here. We're gonna take the next bus we can. We're gonna get some tickets. And then we're gonna explore the city after we drop our stuff off at an Airbnb. Taking the bus throughout Rome made us feel like we are going sightseeing on a little bit of an open air museum tour. But once we arrived, it was time for some food. So we went to a place we went many times in our trip, Buddy's Veggie Restaurant, to get some breakfast. We got a coffee. We also got an orange juice. We couldn't get any Italian food, so we got some sort of American breakfast items before we headed out to begin exploring the beautiful historic streets of Rome, Italy. All right, everybody, I'm hitting up one of our first sites we want to see in Rome. This is the back side of it. We're gonna walk around this little street here and show you the beautiful front. So far, we're trying to appreciate the back side, show a little bit of attention too. So I actually just watched a TikTok that gave some cool information about this really pretty elephant with an obelisk statue. Apparently, the people that commissioned the artist to make the statue wanted to put a solid block underneath his belly, which he did do begrudgingly, but he also did some details to the elephant, such as making the trunk do essentially a middle finger, and the tail on the back is moving to the side. They look like he's about to blow a massive number two facing towards the office of the person that commissioned him to make it. Really cool history. Right, guys? All right, so we were at the famous Pantheon, one of our first major historical sites to see in Rome. This was, of course, an old Roman uh, temple, which later was used as a church for you know, the Roman Catholic Christianity. It was restored by Hadrian back in around 130 AD-ish. Don't get me <laughs> on that history, everybody. Just a little bit of context for a gorgeous building that's extremely well intact. So one of the things that I can definitely tell is magical about Rome is you can just wander around and you'll stumble upon some gorgeous sights. And although we didn't quite stumble upon it, it wasn't anticipated. This is the Chiesa del San Ignazio. Ignazio, maybe. My Italian always needs work. This is just a really famous, beautiful church. It's on their way to the destination everyone's probably wanting to go. That's definitely on my list. It's touristy, but hey, you gotta do it, guys. Either way, make sure to check out this beautiful church and just get lost a little bit and see the beautiful things here. Guys, I hear water. Oh my god. All right, everybody. So this is, of course, the famous Trevi Fountain. Now, the Trevi Fountain was established in the 18th century, around 1761, at least to assume the form that we see today. And then, appropriately, is dedicated to the god Neptune or Poseidon in the Greek uh, mythology. And like I said, it makes perfect sense because you see the fountains, you see the Hippocampia, you see the god Oceanus and Neptuno depicted on this beautiful sort of building structure carved into the back of the fountain. And the water, nice and blue and gorgeous. Way bigger than I thought it was gonna be. I thought it might be a fourth of the size, but this is legitimately like the size of a massive historic temple you might enter somewhere in uh, Greece or Italy. So absolutely gorgeous, guys. Definitely gonna be top to beat this site only by maybe one other that's super famous that I'm sure everyone's already thinking of. Either way, it is without saying a must-see in Rome. And of course, you have to do the touristy thing, which is throw a coin in because that assures that you will visit Rome again in your lifetime. So, do I want to visit Rome again? Probably. 
Although, gotta keep it moving guys, gotta keep seeing new places. Hopefully I can do as much as I can while being here. But it's fun to say you did something really cool. And also fun fact, I think last year, or maybe one of the busy years before COVID, the total amount of coins that were counted that were thrown into the fountain was four million dollars. Four million dollars of coins thrown. And I contributed about five cents to that. And another site you guys should definitely check out is going to be the Spanish Steps located in the Piazza de España, our Spanish plaza. Very beautiful steps with a nice church in the background and a beautiful little fountain as well. Really scenic, another cool little walking attraction to reach. Not too far from the Trevi Fountain to add to your list of sightseeing. And you should try going to the top. A, it's a good workout, which you'll definitely get walking around Rome. And B, gives you a good different perspective of the plaza and the fountain. So time to conquer the Spanish steps. <laughs> I'm never Vanessa goes spinning away from the tackle. <laughs> So some brief history about the Spanish steps is it links the Spanish embassy, which is down below. And then you have all these stairs, not just for an aesthetic point, but they lead up to the Spanish church right here. Really gorgeous sight. And the cherry on top is after walking all those different flights of stairs, which is actually really cool. I was a little overrated, but they kind of wind and go in different directions. It's more than I thought. So you get a beautiful view of Rome, not quite showing everything, but some of the big churches and you can see the Vatican. I'd be able to St. Peter's Basilica in the background, which we'll check out. And you guys should definitely check out as well while in Rome. So those were the Spanish steps, everybody. Gorgeous. Definitely were better than I thought they were going to be. Instead of being just eh, they were pretty cool. <laughs> now, everything included is a really cool, fun experience. Definitely do it on a little sightseeing tour of Rome. Anyways, let's see what's next. what I mean about wandering around Rome, everybody. We were going at the Spanish Steps, saw a really beautiful view, saw a massive cathedral church in the background. So we went to go check it out on our way. This is called, <laughs> I have to take a little peek to remember, Basilica del San Ambrigio e Carlo. Probably said that wrong. Take number two. Basilica del San Ambrigio e Carlo. All right, at least I tried, but this is the correct name of this beautiful building. Alright everybody, another thing you can do is take a stroll a little bit away from the crowds along the Tiber River. Tiber, Tiber. I'll use all pronunciation so I can't be wrong because I've used everything in the book. Is it the prettiest river I've ever seen in my life? No, but it's peaceful. It's a little bit around the outskirts of the city of Rome between here and the Vatican and uh, Chiesa del San Angelo. Maybe that's how you say it. Who knows? Either way, it's worth a little stroll to also connect other sites, which we are currently doing. beautiful building behind me. It's not a temple. It's not a fighting pit where warriors went to die for honor and glory and maybe a chance of freedom. This is actually the city courthouse. Corte de Casazione. You can see the mythological influences on top. Looks like you have a Pegasus and some riders there. Super wide, super beautiful. There's also a library attached as well, I believe. Hi everybody, we are here at the beautiful Piazza Novana, very gorgeous public square and La Plaza here in Roma. There's three different fountains here, one to Neptune and two other ones that I'll uh, post some information about while I'm speaking and just showing you. And then a gorgeous chapel or church right nearby. It's very long, lots of open space, and there's so much detail, so much size to all of the different features here. Definitely have to check it out and stop by and take another look at a beautiful, memorable site here in Rome. Yes. Yes.
After leaving the Piazza Novano, we were walking down the beautiful Via dei Coronari, and then we actually ran across what seemed to be a celebrity getting interviewed. Pretty cool thing to see in Rome. To end our day, we walked a bit north to the Piazza del Popolo to actually walk to a bit of a viewpoint to get a really good view of Rome and hopefully catch a beautiful sunset to end our first day. All right, everybody, we are here at the Terrazza del Pincio, which is a viewpoint at this garden right outside of Rome. And as you can see, it's one of the best viewpoints of the entire city of Rome. Perfect place to come for a sunset. Today's might be a pretty, it might not be. There's lots of dark clouds, but we're gonna stick it out. As you can see, it's no secret. There's other people here as well, but you can still definitely get a view without feeling like you're fighting through, trying to squeeze by to see part of Rome. Really gorgeous. You can see lots of the beautiful churches, historic sites, and maybe other things you've seen, such as the Vatican in the background, or other sites you have for your trip in Rome here. So great way to end the day, always at the sunset. And there's a beautiful garden behind you to explore with some great works and scenes as well. After catching a surprisingly beautiful sunset, we return to Buddy's for the second time of the day, but this time to get some delicious Italian food. I had a delicious Moretti IPA beer, then we had two classic Roman pastas, one being the Grecia, which is my favorite pasta ever, and the Carbonara. Welcome to the Colosseum. <laughs> Alright everybody, so I'm no expert on the Colosseum, I'm not a tour guide, but what I can tell you is this place is over 1500 years old since it started or stopped being used as a fighting pit for the gladiators. 